Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all of your continued support. Happy Pride Weekend. Are you celebrating? Are you going out? Are you staying in with family and friends? I know me, myself, Tara, and Peaches will be staying in, having a fun time painting and eating snacks. So let's all spread our wings and dive into this butterfly study piece. Here you can see I'm laying out the general design seeing where the subject matter is going to go and it looks like I've landed on there. Now with using that green pencil crayon, you don't have to use a green pencil crayon, I'm just obsessed with it. Uh, it tends to erase fairly easy and not blend too much with the paint that I apply later on as opposed to using a graphite pencil. If you're going to paint a painting, I would recommend taking my art teacher from high school's advice, which is paint the background first. When you paint the background first, and then you lay your subject matter over top of that, it's just way easier than doing the subject matter first and then painting the background and accidentally getting your background on your subject matter and needing to go back and correct that. You could see how that could lead to trouble. The color palette with this particular painting is very simple, brown, orange, yellow, white, black, green, and shades therein and any permutation of a mixture of those colors. I'm not using true black, I'm mixing blue and red to create a very, very dark purple or dark blue. And that dark blue slash purple really awful excuse me, really offers a natural dark tone as opposed to using a straight black that you would get from a container. It's much more natural, much easier on the eyes. I'm using my brush here in an angled way with some diluted dark paint in order to get these sharp lines, these detail lines. I'm not using the fat end of the brush, I'm using it angled on its side. And I find that the diluted mixture lends itself to those straight lines as opposed to a thicker mixture which will leave thicker lines. You can see everything's happening fairly quickly. I'm using really only two brushes here, my medium small and my fine tip brush. Uh, my reference photo, it had a blurred background. It was a macro photograph of this butterfly on this beautiful flower. And so I love taking advantage of reference photos like this because with a blurred background you don't have to put a lot of detail into it. It can be very freeform and so that's the approach I took when doing this background. And then when I put detailed subject matter on top of that blurred background, overall it just all complements itself and it's very visually appealing and easy on the eyes. We're getting to the latter part of this design, but a few of the takeaways are paint the background first, keep it very simple with your color palette, and always have fun. Until next time, bye-bye.